Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're looking at a new graphics card release from AMD. This time we're looking at the Radeon R7 265 graphics card, which as the name implies, sits between the R7 260X and the R9 270 and 270X. What's interesting about this particular GPU is that it has essentially the same feature set as the R9 270. It's based on the Pitcairn GPU, it has fewer shader processors, it has 1,024 shaders instead of 1,280, uh, but it runs at 925 megahertz, it's got a 256-bit memory bus, two gigs of memory. It is very, very similar to the R9 270 and 270X in most features. Uh, as, as a result, the performance of it is actually pretty good. Uh, Battlefield 4, uh, Bioshock Infinite, Crisis 3, Metro Last Light, all these games that we tested in our full review show that the performance of this card is much, much closer to the R9 270 than it is to the R7 260X. It's an interesting card placement because it's kind of straddling the line between the R7 and the R9 brands. I probably would have thought that they would have called this the R9 265 or something like that, but obviously just for whatever branding and, and situation reasons, they didn't decide to do that. Uh, Pricing on this is going to be pretty impressive. It's going to start at $149 when it's made available, which will be end of February into early March. So this is not an immediate availability product. Um, $149 pits it up directly against the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 Ti, which is currently selling at about $149 as well. And this card is way faster than the 650i, not even in the same competition really. Um, it's actually very competitive with the GeForce GTX 660, which is a $50 more expensive video card. So once again, AMD has kind of come into the market. They've released a product um, that is very, very price competitive. It's clearly the better performance per dollar option of all of these kind of mid-range mainstream graphics cards. It does have a couple of caveats though, right? So this, it's still a bigger card. Um, this is actually a retail model that we got in. It's kind of, it looks exactly similar to the Radeon R7, R9 270s that we have looked at before. Um, and, and so it wouldn't surprise me at all if some uh, enthusiasts are able to figure out a way to flash a BIOS onto these cards and actually upgrade them, uh, improve their shader counts, improve their clock speeds, that type, that type of thing. Um, with it. it does support Crossfire. It, it does require a single six pin power connection, um, which the R7 260X requires as well. So um, I, I would say overall it's kind of a surprising release. Um, this is essentially a rebrand of the Radeon HD 7850, which was kind of the one card in the 7000 series that we hadn't seen rebranded yet. Um, but it's a very high performance card for the price. It offers a lot of great features. It supports Crossfire, it supports Mantle. Um, it, it does all the things that AMD has been pushing with the exception kind of of true audio. Uh, so if you are a gamer or you know somebody that's a gamer that is kind of limited to this price range of $150 and nothing else changes between now and say early March, I think the R7 265 is likely going to be your best choice. Check out the full review at PCPro.com. We have analysis of the architecture, a lot more benchmarks for you to check out, uh, and you can see our opinions based on what other stuff might be upcoming from NVIDIA as well. Thanks.